Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we have more details on a recent crash at Lake Cumberland that left two teenagers dead. And officials met yesterday to detail how the Commonwealth is trying to fight opioid addiction. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. The time is 6.32 on July 18th. Let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, it's a rainy one. And if you all are waking up with us, it's probably not a bad idea to grab your raincoat, grab yes. your umbrella. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again this morning. Mm, absolutely, because I think you're gonna need it much of the next few days, not just today, off and on for the next few days until we get to the weekend when we might finally dry out just a little bit. Let's take a look. Live pinpoint Doppler radar still tracking that stronger storm moving through parts of Whitley County and maybe eventually over into East Tennessee. So kind of heads up on that. A little bit of lightning with that storm. Most of it now is just basically heavy pockets of rain. Let's take a look, a little closer look at that storm down there in Whitley County scooting over into East Tennessee. And you can see it around the Williamsburg area just to the south there. The worst it looks to be the south. So if you're traveling 25W and and uh, down toward I-75, get a little closer there, uh, between uh, Williamsburg and the Saxton communities there near the border, Jellicoe Mountain, all of those areas. Just be aware of that. Lots of lightning there and some lightning over across into Campbell County, Tennessee as well with that storm. No, though, severe, just the possibility for some lightning there. Some sunshine trying to develop up to our north, it looks like there in Moorhead, but it looks like they may still be a little bit overcast. I think the haze is a little bit rough out there this morning. 63 up there, 63 Pikeville. 63 Jackson, Logan as well, 66 in Somerset, 68 in Harlan and Middlesbrough, 67 in Monticello. Now, again, the haze, I haven't talked about that this much this morning, but that should be drifting out a little bit later on today, before, at least briefly, and it might be back in the future. Now, you see the southern county is a little warmer than it was this time yesterday, and basically the areas that's already rained a little bit cooler this time this morning. So your headlines for today, scattered storms back and forth, heavy rain possible the next several days so stay weather aware but a nice weekend could be on the way we'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes olivia thank you brandon a suspect is dead after police say he shot a west virginia state trooper in raleigh county around 9 22 yesterday morning the trooper was shot in the elbow while conducting a traffic stop at the dollar general in midway off i-77 the suspect scott o'brien was seen running from a wooded area in the coal city Troopers say he did not obey commands to drop his weapon and lethal force was used to stop him. A UK student is dead after a weekend crash in northern Kentucky. Boone County Sheriff's deputies responded to the scene in the southbound lanes of I-75 early Sunday morning. Once on the scene, they found 18-year-old Lauren Collins. Collins was taken to the University of Cincinnati Hospital, where she later died. Collins had been attending the University of Kentucky since last year. Deputies believe a tire struck her windshield when it broke away from another vehicle. One person is dead after a crash in McCreary County. The crash occurred just before 10 o'clock Sunday night on Mount Pleasant Road. Police say a Ford Mustang crossed over the center line and left the road, striking an embankment. The driver of the Mustang, 45-year-old Louis A. Cordell of Strunk, was pronounced dead at the scene. 42-year-old passenger Shelly A. Shelly L. Gilreth of Whitley City was taken to UK Hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Two people were found dead in their home in Rowan County Sunday night. Anthony and Kelly Leadingham, both of Rowan County, died in their house on Maher Drive. The Rowan County Sheriff's Office says the cause of death was listed as natural causes after an initial autopsy report this morning. The couple were both born in 1976. We are learning more about a deadly crash between a jet ski and a boat Friday on Lake Cumberland. Two brothers from Kenton County, Cole and Chase Fisher, were killed. It's still unclear what caused the collision between the jet ski carrying the brothers and a larger boat. People in the area say it happened in a narrow channel in what used to be a no-wake zone. Rangers say it is important to follow the rules on the lake. 
as you're traveling down the lake, you want to maintain at least middle to the right side. Uh, you definitely don't want to, we call it cutting the point. You don't want to cut the point on the wrong side of the lake. The coroner said both were wearing life jackets when the crash happened, and it's believed that alcohol was not a factor. The Opioid Abatement Advisory Commission held a hearing yesterday that focused on a naturally occurring substance that could help fight addiction. It's called Ibogaine. It could be used to treat opioid abuse disorder. It is currently illegal in the U.S. It has psychedelic effects. Dr. Deborah Mash has spent 30 years studying the drug's anti-addictive qualities. She says its best quality is preventing relapse and believes it should be available with other therapeutics. We will be able to prove in effective and well-designed clinical trials that this drug is transformative. She says trials would be done in an inpatient setting. The drug would be given by tablet and kick in within 45 minutes. Its psychoactive effects would last four to eight hours. Riverside Christian School in Breathitt County has dealt with flood water in their school not once, but twice in the last two years. But I met with school leaders yesterday and they tell me it won't happen again because the school is on the move. In less than two years, Riverside Christian School staff found themselves scooping mud out of their building, not once, but twice. The week of the flood, I met with our entire staff and gave everybody an out, said nobody signed up to do this twice. Um, if you need to go, like go, like I get it. It's a lot and our entire staff stayed. Sticking together through the hard days and murky water. They weren't even sure if the doors would open for the 22-23 school year, but they did. Like with Jesus, it just, it happened. <laughs> and so um, it's been, it's hard to explain. It doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It just kind of, it just happened. And as they prepare for another school year, the staff recently announced a partnership with Breathitt County Schools, purchasing Marie Roberts Caney Elementary School to relocate. We knew that they were consolidating. We knew that they were moving. We knew that the building would be up for grabs, um, but the, the logistics of that were kind of where we were like, okay, what do we need to do? It was everybody. It was everybody working together. Um, and it, it happened. It worked. It was a lot of hard work on their end, on our end. And staff says students will walk through the doors on August 16th without having to worry about another flood entering the doors. Our brains don't function unless we feel safe. We, we can't do anything else in our day. So not just for our students, but for our parents, for our families who drop their kids off. It's like, okay, they are okay. They are safe. Providing safety and excitement as the school enters a new era. We're excited to start school. Um, I've heard from some parents that we have kids who are really nervous about a new building. I was like, look, I'm the principal and I still don't know my way around. I'm getting lost. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, we're all learning together. Um, and there's, there's a lot of fun in that. There's a lot of fun in that. Riverside Christian School purchased the new building for $350,000 and Breathitt County Schools Superintendent Philip Watts said in a statement to WIMT yesterday, quote, after going through two floods, our hope is for this building to continue to serve the community. I am both humbled and honored to be part of this project. A big thank you to the Riverside team and the Breathitt County Board of Education, end quote. For more information, visit our website. Last year, a large chunk of downtown Millersburg and Bourbon County was destroyed by a fire. Now, a local nonprofit is working to bring businesses back to the city. Kevin Smith, who is the president of Community Ventures, says the issue in Millersburg is that the commercial buildings are at a point where entrepreneurs cannot afford to move in and fix them up. The nonprofit has stepped up by purchasing several properties in the downtown area. Our goal now is to get these nine properties, uh, historic properties, back up and going, back on the tax rolls and businesses in them. The $4.5 million fund is named after Jan Wagner, a long-term Millersburg revitalization advocate.
641 almost 642. We continue to track a few little light showers heading toward the border. There may be some rumbles of thunder as well. No severe weather, just a few scattered storms are crossing the border in most areas, but still some pockets of heavy rain. Still watching this one little cell that is basically south of Corbin, almost south of Williamsburg, heading into parts of maybe even the western Bell County scooting across the border. These cells are moving to the southeast a little bit, so that may go into Bell and Claiborne counties eventually, so over to Campbell County, but some heavy rain near the Saxon community down I-75 and 25W into parts of Campbell County. I-75 at Corbin, closest camera we have to that there, but not a whole lot showing up there this morning. A little bit of haze in 66, 66 London Corbin Airport, Williamsburg, Jacksboro, Somerset, 68 in Middlesboro, Jonesville, and Harlan, kind of a little bit of Warm air kind of coming up from the south there and some 50s over in Wise to start your day. Day planner, we're going to see you basically back and forth scattered chances for showers and storms throughout the day. Not an all day washout. Temperature should get into the mid 80s a little bit later on this afternoon. Olivia. Thanks, Brandon, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 643 still to come on Mountain News this morning. A new study warns of the potential health risk of e-cigarettes.